Howdy, it's Jim Arado, and this is May 2022, and we're in Springfield, Illinois, going to the Oak Ridge Cemetery, and it's the final resting site of Abraham Lincoln and his entire uh, immediate family, except for Robert Todd Lincoln, who's in Arlington. We're going to visit a couple of other graves, too. By the way, there's a little gift shop right outside of the cemetery, right there. That is probably my favorite gift shop in town. If you're going to be in Springfield, make sure you stop at uh, at that gift shop. I, I believe it's called the Lincoln Souvenir Gift Shop. But yeah, make sure you go there. They they have uh, they stock nicer quality items. I've bought a couple T-shirts there over the years, and they're they're nice. They're made out of nice material. They hold up well. Uh, they don't they don't cheap out on you. And they've got a really nice selection of postcards, some older ones, uh, some books. It's just um, it's it's the place to stop, in my opinion, for your souvenirs. I just wanted to give them a quick plug. But yeah, we're at Oak Ridge. You just saw Lincoln's tomb a moment ago. And uh, we're, we're going to drive around for a little bit. I'll give you just a quick look at the cemetery, uh, drive it around. There's, there's actually several very significant people buried here other than just Lincoln. And on this, this, yeah, this was probably our third visit here. And I wanted to check out a couple of other uh, people that are buried here. General or President Grant's daughter, uh, her final resting place is here, and we'll go look for it here in a moment. It's actually not marked that great. There's a couple of signs, but yeah, I mean, they're not right by her grave. It, it, it took us a little bit to find it. We Googled, you know, we found a couple pictures. We found it. It wasn't too hard, but you'll definitely want to pull out your phone and Google around a little bit. And, and by the way, let me read to you from a, a marker right, right here. This is the first resting place of Abraham Lincoln. And it mentions that Lincoln was laid to rest here in Oak Ridge Cemetery's public vault during services held May 4th, 1865. Government officials, members of the military, foreign diplomats, and private citizens gathered to witness the ceremony. Over the following months, visitors and the thousands came to pay their respects. A New Yorker found that the stone doors of the sepulcher were open, and the sentry permitted people in small parties to approach the iron grating and view the coffin within. It was draped in black and festooned with garlands of flowers and evergreen shrubs. Sadness pressed heavily upon me at the scene. The president's casket, along with that of his son William, who had died at the White House in 1862, remained here until December 1865. They then were moved to a newly built temporary tomb located about midway up the ridge. Built in 1864, this receiving tomb, like those found in many American cemeteries, served those who in their bereavement are not immediately prepared to cite a lot for the final resting place. Also those who are aware the arrival of friends. Oak Ridge remodeled and enlarged the vault in 1891. A uh, little little spelling mistake actually on that sign. Uh, there's who are are waiting the arrival of friends. Anyway, it's a nice little sign and that uh, gives you a little idea about uh, the first spot where Abe and Willie were laid to rest. And uh, look it up. There were some attempts to steal Lincoln's body. And he was uh, moved a couple times. Interesting stories uh, uh, in those situations. They actually kind of had him hidden for a while. Eh, it's a story for another day, though. But but look it up when you have a moment. It's interesting. And actually, I think kind of to our left there is Nellie Grant. Uh, I think we just passed her or we're about to pass her. But she's, she's buried in this area. We'll stop and, and kind of walk out to where she's buried. Uh, of course, the daughter of President U.S. Grant. Also, we'll stop and look at uh, William Herdman's uh, grave. And uh, again, both are a little bit hard to find, but if you you know go to findagrave.com, you know you can Google around and get a rough idea of where they're buried. But you have to you, you got to do some traipsing around the cemetery a little bit. 
which is always fun though. I kind of enjoy looking looking around old cemeteries like this. This this one is big though, and it's uh, where yeah, it's got a lot going on. There's some other people I do need to find at some point here too, but I wanted to see those two while we were here on this particular day. And and just a very brief note on William Herndon. If you're not familiar with him, if you're not you know. If you don't read up on Lincoln, you might not really know who uh, Herndon was. He was Lincoln's law partner. In fact, their law office is now the visitor center here in Springfield. Uh, he was very good friends with Lincoln. However, he was not very good friends with Mary Todd Lincoln. And after Lincoln's death, he, he kind of was open, or at least uh, had a lot to say about the martyred president and his wife and some of it not not specifically flattering um, and he is is responsible mostly for the rumors of Ann Rutledge uh, Ann Rutledge um, supposedly Abraham Lincoln's girlfriend earlier in his life before he met Mary Todd Lincoln um, and he and he wrote about Anne and kind of kind of brought that whole story up. Some scholars have uh, felt that maybe Herndon yeah, exaggerated Abraham Lincoln and Anne Rutledge's relationship. Um, I, I disagree, though. There's there's a really interesting book I read. I actually picked it up in Petersburg, Illinois. At the uh, so the Crazy Daisy gift shop, it's by a fellow named Raymond H. Montgomery. It's called Living in the Shadows of Greatness. And Raymond Montgomery, who is uh, no longer with us, but he wrote this book. And actually, you know, he grew up in that area and had some yeah, first-hand accounts from locals who basically confirmed the relationship. And it's it's an interesting book. You should check that out if you have a moment. But Herndon is an interesting character in his own right, and of course his relationship with Lincoln is uh, is fascinating. And there, yeah, there's uh, there's Nellie's tombstone. Just to point that out real quick, with some family members there. And there is uh, William Herndon's. And we'll we'll keep walking around and driving around a little bit. I did find at the Prairie Archives bookstore, which is right next to the old state capitol here in Springfield, they have an incredible selection of local and Lincoln and just collectible books. If you collect ephemera, it is a wonderful place to stop. And I picked up a very small brochure printed by the authority of the state of Illinois Man, I want to say this is probably from the 50s. And it's just a little travel brochure on the Lincoln tomb. But it, it gives it gives a really nice description of the tomb and, and gives you some information about it. So I'm going to read from this brochure that I believe is from maybe the 60s, probably the 50s. And it says, A shocked world received the news that Abraham Lincoln had been fatally shot on April 14, 1965. As Lincoln breathed his last, his Secretary of War, Edward, Edward M. Stanton, said, Now he belongs to the ages. Springfield citizens immediately started plans for a memorial and tomb. Oak Ridge Cemetery was selected, as Lincoln had often remarked when passing the knoll. Is not that a beautiful sight? The Lincoln National Memorial Association started a drive for $240,000. The design of Larkin G. Meade, Jr. of Brattleboro, Vermont was chosen from the 37 submitted by 31 American artists. The Meade plan placed the tomb proper at the south with a 117-foot spire, heroic bronze groups of cavalry, infantry, and artillery, and navy in a 10-foot statue of Lincoln. The body of Lincoln was in a receiving vault from May until December and in a temporary vault until 1871. There have been three constructions of the tomb, which was started in 1869. The first, dedicated in 1874, cost $180,000. The second in 1901, $100,000. Third in 1931 at $175,000. In 
1876, thieves attempted to steal the Lincoln body for ransom, but were foiled by Secret Service men. In 1895, the state assumed control of the tomb. Previous to the present construction, visitors entered outside the tomb. Now entrance is made through an inside hallway. Oh, and by the way, look at the little uh, buffalo and the uh, pennies left there at the back of the tomb. Uh, the last construction produced the most artistic use of marble and bronze of any tomb in the world. The body of Lincoln is placed 30 inches north of the cenotaph and 6 feet below the surface of the ground. To the south and crypts are Miss Lincoln and three of their four children. Edwin Baker, William Wallace, and Thomas, familiarly known as Tad. The eldest son, Robert, who died in 1926, is in Arlington National Cemetery. The registration room has a bronze model of the Daniel Chester French statue. The original, six times as large, with its massiveness, awes visitors to the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. Eight periods of the life of Lincoln are commemorated by four-foot statuettes done by familiar artists and placed in niches around the hallway. Four bronze tablets give a brief sketch of his life. The farewell address, Gettysburg speech, and part of his second inaugural address. Gold stars represent the 48 states. Abraham Lincoln, 1809 through 1865, is the simple inscription on the cenotaph. Uh, by the way, I love the uh, St. Gaudens statue there on the right. Uh, one of my favorites. I, I see it a lot. I see uh, many, many versions of that all over the place. State flags where generations of the Lincoln family lived are at the back. Massachusetts, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana, and Illinois. The national colors and the president's flag center the group. A bronze reproduction of Guts and Borglum's Lincoln head in heroic size is opposite the tomb entrance. Borglum, as you know, sculpted Mount Rushmore. Anyway, yeah, there it is. There's uh, what you come in here to see. I really like the, this and the way it's done. It's, it's very spectacular. You know, it's not... Um, it, it's to me it's very appropriate for Abraham Lincoln you go in you kind of have to walk around a bit to actually get to uh, well as close as you can get to him and there of course is the rest of his family interesting and ironic a bit that Robert Todd Lincoln is in Arlington National Cemetery a uh, former home of Robert E. Lee yeah and, and Robert wanted to kind of he wanted to be his own person and he was very successful very interesting fellow in his own right i've got a couple of other videos up about him elsewhere i've visited his uh his home up in vermont and you know he tried very hard to be a good human in his own right and and to to you know not be the son of abraham lincoln unfortunately there's no way to escape being the son of Abraham Lincoln. And, and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure he admired his father and all, but, uh, yeah, he, he tried to, to be his own person. And, 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 and in most ways he succeeded. But, uh, but yeah, so the whole family, with the exception of Robert Todd Lincoln, is here too. We did the uh, ghost walk with Garrett Moffat several years ago, and he had some theories some interesting theories about uh, Mary Todd Lincoln and about some of the burial here. So anyway, that was Lincoln's tomb. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, just for the heck of it, I, I do have a nice collection of Abraham Lincoln postcards. I love these old uh, linen postcards. And I thought I would just put up uh, kind of a brief slideshow at the end of this. Just of some old linen postcards. So check those out. I hope you enjoyed that. And thanks.